Hello and welcome back to another episode of the iApple Guy. In this episode we're visiting a fellow vintage computer, well mainly Apple collector. We'll check out his collection, fix his broken Macintosh Plus ED or education and attempt to clean his Macintosh Classic 2 logic board. So he has this Mac Plus and the machine turns on but the screen doesn't turn on so the screen doesn't light up. And I told him to smack the side of the machine and see if the screen turns on and so he did and the screen actually turned on for like a couple of seconds and that's when I told him like hey this is probably a broken trace or bad solder joint on the analog board this is basically a very easy fix and that's when we agreed to fix his Mac Plus over there and I could check out his collection as well and film all of that for you guys. Now he has a couple of compact Macs and I believe numerous of them don't work. Um, he also has an iMac G3 that struggles to boot up but that's for another episode. Okay so quick disclaimer here, my country Belgium is currently in a lockdown because of the global pandemic. Now this video was shot in June 2020 when we were actually allowed to have a social bubble of 10 regular contacts. So no worries there, I actually visited this guy regularly and he was in my, you know, bubble. Okay, let's go. I needed to grab my tools and also grabbed an 800k boot disk for the Mac Plus because he didn't have a working boot floppy. These should work on a Mac Plus because these are double sided. So these are 800k. Now how is that? That's some quality content right there. To open one of these compact Macs you need a long T15 Torx screwdriver. Unlike most of these compact Macs, the Mac Plus actually has 5 screws on the back. There's one hiding here in the battery compartment. When we opened the Macintosh, we briefly admired the aesthetics of the Mac Plus and checked out the signatures. Now, before working on one of these, you need to discharge the CRT. Please be careful when working on CRTs and look into how to properly handle them. Now I can safely work on the machine. Now, remember that the screen only turned on when Glenn hit the side? Well, that's why I first decided to take out the analog board since I suspected bad solder joints or bad traces. Glenn also took out the logic board because he wanted to give it a clean with compressed air. Before removing the analog board, I'll unscrew this ground cable because this is connected to the analog board. The analog board should now come right off by unscrewing four screws and disconnecting all of the connections like the wire harness between the logic board and analog board for power, connection for the deflection yoke, etc. One for the ground cable, two at the back and one at the front. Well, I think that's it after. Yeah. Wait, it's normal. Yeah. Yeah. To access the solder joints, we removed the insulation sheet. To remove the insulation sheet, all you have to do is undo these pins. I took it out and we started looking. And yep, sure enough, there were a bunch of cracked solder joints at one of the connectors. These aren't the only ones I found though. I checked out every solder joint and refloat every one that was cracked or looked dull. I feel like this isn't only a very common problem on all electronics but especially on these earlier compact Mac analog boards. I have seen a ton of YouTube videos on Macintosh 128Ks, 512Ks to Macintosh Pluses that had cracked solder joints on the analog board causing this black screen problem. Now that looks better. I might have used a little too much solder on these joints, but that's no reason for them to not work. It should be fine. After reflowing the solder joints, I cleaned up the flux with some isopropyl alcohol. Now we can partially put the machine back together. 
Now, there are still a couple of problems with this computer. The first one being old capacitors. The electrolytics are well past their prime and should probably be replaced, but they work fine for now and they could probably go on for years. That doesn't mean they should though. An even bigger issue are these Arifa caps. These tend to fail and violently explode or crack open. You then get a chemical reaction causing them to stop working. But that's for a later episode as well, so stick around. I performed a final check before powering the machine on. First test it out. And there we go, that seems to work. With the machine then working, we could put in a boot disk. I brought one of my 800k or double sided disks because he didn't have one at the moment. And again, this works fine. Now it's time to put it all back together until we can recap it or at least swap out the old Reefa capacitors. Here Glenn adjusts the screen a bit. And on goes the case. And here's Steve Jobs in Mac Paint. Ain't that cool? Next up is this original Macintosh Classic 2. It doesn't turn on, which wasn't a surprise of course. Any late 80s to mid 1990s Apple product means horrible leaky surface mount capacitors on the logic board. We decided to clean the electrolyte and other dirt of the board with some isopropyl alcohol because we didn't have caps at the moment. I scrubbed and scrubbed but still got nothing. Yeah, this definitely needs its capacitors replaced and its traces, solder joints, etc. repaired where needed. This again will be a future video. If you want to see this process now, then you can watch one of my restoration videos. Now, this is a second revision Macintosh Classic and the one in the video is or has a first revision logic board. No, that's not a problem though, it's the same process, just a different board. After all that we just relaxed a bit and I had some fun surrounding myself and having a blast with all of Glenn's Apple collection. I mean just look at all this great stuff. I've been collecting slash been a tech enthusiast for about two and a half years and I haven't seen many of these computers in real life. So I got pretty excited when I actually got to see this in real life. Okay, that about wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed this episode of iApple Guy and Glenn and I had an absolute blast working on these machines and you know, talking about our collections and stuff like that. And yeah, it is quite unfortunate that we can't meet up anymore um, for stuff like that because of the global pandemic and you know, the lockdown and stuff like that. Um, but at least I hope that we can do this again in the future. Uh, another, th another thing that I wanted to mention is that I know I've been quite slow to release new videos lately um, but yeah life has been pretty busy but that doesn't mean that I'm not making new videos because I do actually enjoy making these videos like a lot. So um, if you like this kind of content then please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. Also, don't forget to check out all of my social media for more vintage Apple related stuff like this. And you can also join our Discord server if you'd like to talk to me and some of my friends uh, about this kind of stuff. Links are in the description. And then I'll see you in the future.